analysis. Yes, Mike, it's going to be borderline, there's no doubt about it. Uh, as you're aware, Alan has uh, backed off a little bit of RPM to save or conserve fuel. The guys here are a little bit worried that uh, he may have to come in. Uh, we won't know for a few laps, it's just going to be so close. But, I mean, Alan will be on the mountain or somewhere around the circuit. It gives one cough, he'll have to come in. Gee, that is close, isn't it? Yeah. Exit again to uh, Forest Elbow. We're full. And the class leading uh, Toyota heads down the Conrad Strait. Yeah, well, Price, he's certainly dropped his revs. It's an audible difference. You can hear he's dropped them right down. So he's obviously aware of the fuel situation and uh, he's trying to stretch at every last drop at this stage. As Pete McKay said earlier on, we still haven't heard not even the slightest yodel from the fat lady, so we... I reckon it's, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> OK, this time past, we will have five laps to go on the great race. Has Grice got enough fuel to go the distance? Radisic is still closing. runs back in third place. Peter Brock is fourth. Still approximately the same gap there. You can see it. So they go beneath the Corolla hot hatch sign. Here comes Alan Grice. He goes through. Look for the Red Sierra. And there he here is. it comes past Jeff Fall. So he is working away at cutting back that margin to Repco Corner. What a nerve-wracking time for Alan Grice. He's almost trying to pull off some sort of high-speed economy run. Minimum throttle openings, dropping his revs. And he's going to be... Oh, this is going to be very tight. Actually, you think about it, he's got to try and time his run to the perfection, you know. Through Castrol now, heading down to the S's. There's not much in it, is there? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's, gee, it's, it looks like it's getting closer all the time. Gricey, out of Toledo Tools turn. Next time around, three to go. One smoking across there to the left. Looks like the Bagnall France of it car. Alan Grice, so close, yet so far. Second to third, that's, uh, of course, Paul Radisic to Larry Perkins. One minute, 16. No race there at the moment. Larry conserving to finish third. Hopefully to give Commodore and Holden a 1-3 in this. Here he comes. We're hiding with him. Riveting stuff. Three laps to go for Alan Grice. It would be just criminal if it ran out of fuel there. <laughs> Absolutely criminal. Car, plenty of Valvoline pouring out the back of it. Gricey on the way up the mountain for the third last time. You can see in the background there's the Red Sierra just, just coming onto the straight. So there's a length of mountain straight apart. So it'll be interesting to see over the next lap or so how close they get now. So they might be measuring the fuel back there in the, uh, the pits, but uh, Gricey's just cranked out a... Uh, a two minute 18 lap <laughs> just to let them know that they're all fair dinkum yeah. <laughs> so the gap has uh, opened up again to about uh, 15 well Commodore's still standing sweet no problems at this stage he's working it hard just like lock of a break as he's going in just the merest hint of uh, a break lock up just working it hard I think what we, we might be looking at a fuel stop coming up, John, because if he's putting in lap times like this, maybe he's trying to make the biggest break he can on Radisic before he ducks in for just one turn of fuel. Wouldn't matter, mate. Uh, 14 seconds, forget it. It's all over. Yeah. Uh, by the time you, you pitted and got out again, Paul could have drive past in first gear and do it. Yeah. Holden's first, third and fifth. best result for uh, Holden's for a long, long time. Even when um, 
Brocky got up in 87. Uh, you know, it was sort of a Clayton's victory because uh, all the kudos went to the Fords. It took nine months to win it. That's right. Two laps to go. Win Percy. Oh, the feeling for win. And also uh, a great result for their sponsors, uh, Castrol and uh, Telecom. They've stuck with the team. There have been uh, slim pickings against the Sierras on the short tracks. Um, but there is some fairness, I guess. This car's come, uh, come good absolutely at the right time. It's, it's amazing how it all works, isn't it? You chip away and chip away until finally you've got a really good race package, and that's what this has been today. 14.66 seconds. The gap back to Paul Radisic of New Zealand. As he guides the Shell Sierra number 18. He has turned in a fine drive, Paul Radisic, and so too um, Jeff Allen today. Coming across the skyline, down towards Castrol. A lap and a half to go. Have you got enough gas, Al? Yeah, I'm looking pretty good, Mike. Anyway, it's a bit expensive to buy up here on top of the mountain. Yes, the, the crew looked a little nervous with the churn out there. Everybody's nervous with a lap and a half to go, mate. I've got the ref back. We certainly, um, we've done this number of laps before today. Wonderful 